Hello, my little yarnivores and spiderettes. Fiber Spider back again with another tutorial just for you. And today I have got a lovely lacy piece, perfect for this time of year. And this is what I call the wildflower wrap. Mm. And this video is sponsored by Lion Brand. Thank you very much, Lion Brand. I appreciate it. And I did use your yarn. This is ice cream, the big scoop. And the colorway is Parfait. And actually, all of the flowers for this piece were done using less than one skein of this yarn. And I've used the ice cream for a number of projects. And I thought, hmm, this would be perfect. And the colors are so vibrant. And they really work together. And a uh, little we'll detail for you. Um, it is, of course, 100% acrylic. It is 1,117 yards. So yes, you can totally make a finished piece with just one skein, believe it or not. You know, And because it is so lacy, a little goes a long way. Mm -hmm. And it is a weight of three. And so now the recommended hook size actually is a size H. And believe it or not, I did in fact use a size H. Now, of course, you can use whatever works for you. And the basis of this, it is a series of motifs that are joined together. And I have one right here to show you what one looks like when it's not attached to another one. And so, yes, there are a lot of ends to sew in. However, you don't have to sew the pieces together because it is a join as you go method. So that makes it a lot easier. Now, I'm gonna show you how to crochet these motifs. It's very simple. It is only a couple of rounds, no big deal. And then I'm also gonna show you how to join them together as you crochet them so it makes it a lot easier. And, yes, there's an and. I'm also going to show you how you can do a simple border around the whole thing to sort of unify it, bring it together, and clean up the edges a little bit. Really, really simple, and I hope you guys like it. So, again, Lion Brand, thank you so much for this opportunity once again. I really appreciate it. And without further ado, let's get started. Alrighty, round one. All right. By the way, I do get a lot of questions where I got this. This is actually a Clover brand uh, row counter. I got this at Michael's. I, I do. I get a lot of questions where I got this. But, you know, for those of you that are wondering, you know, not sponsored for this. Um, but I do get a lot of questions. All right. So, like I said, we are using a size H 5.0 millimeter hook. And we are going to start right in. So, I'm going to start, of course, with our obligatory slip knot. Hello. There we go. And we're going to do some chains. All right, so we need one, which is going to be our chain that we are going to crochet into. You could also do the magic ring. You could do a chaining of four and a slip stitch to join it. I like to work within the first chain. So chain four more because that's going to be a double crochet and a chain one space. So it's going to be a chaining of five initially, all right, in a nutshell, because we need a double crochet, a chain one space, and a chain to work into. So chain five and then double crochet into that first chain and we need 10 more. So chain one, double crochet into that first chain, chain one, double crochet again into that same chain and it will grow, it will stretch out and that's okay because you can always cinch it and then sew in the ends later. So I've got four, chain one, double crochet, chain one, double crochet, 
chain one, double crochet, chain one, double crochet, chain one, double crochet. How many do I have now? Hmm? Two, four, six, eight, nine. I need three more. Chain one, double crochet, pull out some more yarn, chain one, double crochet, chain one, double crochet. I think I should have 12 now. So I've got two, four, six, eight, 10, 12. Perfect. And then to finish up round one, chain one, and then slip stitch to the one, two, three, the third chain from where we started, being sure to leave a chain one in between here and your next double crochet. You need that chain one space. So slip stitch into that third chain, And there you go. That is the end of round one. Now you can, of course, pull your tail and you can cinch it up and you can sew in the end underneath your doubles there. No problem. And I'm going to do that. And then we will continue on with round two. All right, round two. Now I did sew my end in and I clipped it. So I would recommend definitely sewing in that center thread before you start doing the, you know, the whole join as you go method, because, you know, the, the fewer yarn ends that you have to deal with later, the better. Trust me. You know, when you finish the motif, yes, you do have an end that you have to deal with that you can deal with later, but that middle one deal with it sooner than later. Trust me. All right, so from here, we are going to start by doing a chaining up of three. And then into this first chain one space, single crochet. So we got a little chain three arch right there. Okay, then chain three again. And single crochet into the next chain one space chain three, single crochet into the next chain one space, chain three, single crochet into the next chain one space, and we're going to do this all the way around, and then I will show you how to join. So it's just chain three, single crochet into the next chain three space. So we're going to have all these cute little arches all the way around. Chain three, single crochet and you're not going into you know the the double crochet but into the space in between one two three single crochet into the space one two three single crochet into the space one two three another single and at the end we are going to have a total of 12 of these arches one, two, three, single, one, two, three, single, one, two, three. All right, almost there. So now, single crochet into this last space right here. And then to finish it up and make it look nice and pretty, all right, going to do some slip stitching. So we have our first chaining of three right here. Well, if you turn it a little bit, you can see a space where that first chain is. Do a slip stitch in there, like so. So slip stitch into there and then slip stitch into the next chain. So we're working our way up so that we're in the middle of the arch. And that's important so that it looks seamless. 
and then last but not least do a single crochet into that first arch that we created all right 12 little arches all the way around all right so that is the end of round two all righty round three so round three and the next round actually are very similar, but we're using more chains because we needed to grow outwards, right? So the last round, round two, it was three chains. Round three, it's gonna be four chains. So one, two, three, four, single crochet into the next chain three space, chain four, one, two, three, four, single crochet into the next chain three space and so forth all the way around so one two three four single crochet 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 one two three four single one two three four it's like a marching band <laughs> single crochet one two three four single and we will have at the end of this round again 12 arches one two three four all right so we've reached the beginning and so at this point that first stitch that single crochet we need to slip stitch into that single crochet right there And then to work our way to the center of that arch, slip stitch into the next two chains. It can be a little bit tricky, but it is so worth it. So slip stitch, and then slip stitch into the next one. There we go. And then single crochet like so. All right, so that is the end of round three. One more round to go. We can do it. All right. All righty, last but not least, we've got round four. And like I said, it's very similar to the previous two rounds, except this time it's going to be a chaining of five. So that's what we're going to do. Chain five. One, two, three, four, five. And then, of course, slip, uh, not slip stitch, single crochet, excuse me, into the next chain four space. Chain five. Single into the next chain four space. Chain five. One, two, three four, five, single crochet into the next space. And before you know it, once you're doing these, it will fly by. One, two, three, four, five, single into the next space. One, two, three, four, five, single into the next. One, two, three, four, five, single into the next, one, two, three, four, five, single into the next, one, two, three, four, five, single into the next, there we go, one, two, three, four, 
five, single into the next, one, two, three, four, five, single into the next, one, two, three, four, five, single into the next, and we are at the end. So one, two, three, four, five, and then slip stitch into that first single crochet, like so. Now, there are variations to this basic flower motif pattern, to be sure. Yes, there are variations to it, but uh, this one I found worked for me very nicely because of the way that it grows, and in spite of the fact that it's very, very lacy, yes, it's not so lacy that you could stick your arm through it, okay? Uh, you could keep going by going from five chains to six to seven, so on and so on and so forth. You could, however, there is such thing sometimes as too lacy, you know? So that's where I left off at five because you don't want your piece to have the main thing is holes here, you know, which you will see as we do the join as you go. These holes will get bigger and bigger and bigger if you have bigger chain spaces than five. So I left off at the five. That's just my personal preference. But for the sake of this tutorial, I would say leave off at five. You know, otherwise you're going to have, you know, really tremendous gaping holes in your piece. All right. So what you can do now is you can cut your yarn, you know, leaving yourself a, a decent length of tail so that you can sew in your ends. And there you go. All righty. All righty. So now we are at the part where I'm going to show you how to do the join as you go method. Now I did, like I said, I used nothing but the same colorway for all of the motifs for the wildflower wrap. However, I found personally that it's a lot easier if you make all of your motifs and then you can strategically arrange them as to where you want them to be attached. You know, granted, it means doing all of the four rounds and then backtracking by unraveling part of the last round. And then you can do the join as you go method. What I like to do is I like to leave these first two loops. See, this is my starting point right here. And I like to leave this one intact and this one and go right to that point like there. Also, the reason why is because at this point, I know exactly how much yarn I need left in order to finish the round. So as you can see, if I just gather it up, so this, this is the equivalency to one finished motif right here. And I have another one right here and we can join these to other pieces. And like I said, strategically figure out, you know, the colors and how they go together. Now, of course, if you're all, you know, doing them all as the same color, you don't have to worry about this. Okay. You know, you can just join as you go. No problem. But what I found is as much as I love this colorway, there's a lot of blue. I ended up with a lot of blue motifs. <laughs> so I had to compensate by doing a bunch and then setting them aside and then figuring out, all right, how do I want to position these? Otherwise you would end up sort of like with color pooling, you know? So it's a matter of strategically doing this. So I know I'm rambling, but I like to be thorough. I'm going to show you how you can take one of these slightly unraveled pieces and then join it to a finished one. So let's do that. Okay. All right. So now what you need to also keep in mind is that there are 12 of these arches. So 12 
divided by 6 is 2. So this can basically be a hexagon shape, you know, using two loops per side, you know, if that makes sense. So after, you know, we have these two starting loops here, well, we're going to continue on by chaining up two and then grabbing our finished piece right here. And by the way, this is the, the, the right side. This is the wrong side. So with the right side, and then, so wrong side facing wrong side, if you will, you can do it that way. So after chaining up two, then slip stitch into one of these loops, chain two, and then into the next loop, single crochet, chain two, and then slip stitch into the next loop of the finished one, chain two, and then single crochet back into your working piece. All right, so we have successfully joined two of our motifs together. And like I said, since you have 12 of these arches, two of them counts as one side. You see? Now, the reason why it is a chain two, slip stitch, chain two, is because that is the equivalent of five chains. So it works out nice and neatly. So then to finish the round for the working piece, just do the exact same thing as we had done previously. So chain five, one, two, three, four, five, single crochet into the next loop, chain five, one, two, three, four, five, single crochet, chain five, single crochet, One, two, three, four, five, single crochet. One, two, three, four, five, single crochet. One, two, three, four, five, single. One, two, three, four, oh, five, single. And we're almost at the end. One, two, three, four, five. All right. And then slip stitch into that first single crochet, just like we did when we were ending the fourth round initially. All right. So that is how you can join your more, more bleh, your motifs together. <laughs> getting all tongue-tied. All right, so now I'm going to show you how you can join a motif into this divot, because what that means is you need to join these two to your working motif, and you need to join these two to the same motif. It can be a little bit tricky, but I'm going to show you how to do it. Alrighty, so in order to join one motif to two motifs to, like I said, go into a, a divot or a, you know, a gap, if you will. So basically, I ripped out all but the last two of that fourth round of this working one. So like I said, we're going to be working into this space and this space and then this space and this space. All right. Okay. And then we're going to have one of those holes right here. Okay. So let's get into it. So again, this is my wrong side and turning this so that we have the wrong sides facing the wrong sides. All 
All right, so like I said, we need to do this space and this space. Be sure not to work into this space or this space right here. Okay, because that's already connected. Those those are accounted for. So it's this one and this one. So we're going to work our way across this way. So this is the first one that we're going to work into right here. So again, we need to chain two and then grab our other piece here and slip stitch. Chain two, single crochet into the next space. chain two, slip stitch into the second right there, chain two, single crochet into the next, chain two. Now we're going to go into our next motif. So again, being short, not to go into this one because it's already occupied. Go into the next one slip stitch, chain two, go back to our working piece, single crochet, chain two, slip stitch into the next space, chain two, single crochet into the next space of the working piece, and then let me pull out the yarn here a bit and look, check it out. We did it. So as you can see, and also don't worry because you can shift these stitches because it's not actually locked in. You know, you can, you can shift them a little bit if they are not to your liking in the position, but yeah, check it out. See, when we went into the, the blue piece, it was one and then two, and then skipping on over and then three and then four. So it's all connected beautifully and with no sewing, yay. <laughs> so now let's finish the rest of this round. All right, so chain five, one, two, three, four, five, and then single crochet, one, two, three, four, five, single crochet, one, two, three, four, five, single, one, two, three, four, five, single, one, two, three, four, five, single, and one more because that's where we first started. So one, two, three, four, five, and then slip stitch to that first single crochet. Voila. And there you go. So let me lay this out for you all nice and pretty. Ta-da! So all you have to do is just keep attaching pieces to pieces. And, you know, so then you could add, say, another one. You know, again, trying to be a little strategic with your placement. Like, I personally wouldn't put this one here. I would be more inclined to put it here. So then you would, you know, unravel part of your round and then restitch it so that you would connect these two points and these two points. You see? Now, of course, you can ultimately make this piece whatever size you want in whatever dimensions. You know, these are basically crocheted tinker toys. You know, <laughs> you, know you, you can do really whatever shape you want. Me, I liked the idea of doing a trapezoid shape, which is a total of five along the base, and it went up at an angle with 12 across the top because, okay, 
if you do a typical triangle shape shawl, it's going to come down very, very, very low. If you have the the length of it, well, the height of it, it's it's going to come down pretty darn low. And I want it to be more of a wrap as opposed to a shawl. Ultimately, you know, you know what I always say, do what works for you. But as far as the the dimensions, I thought that it worked much, much better as a wrap as opposed to a shawl. I know I'm mincing words here, but mm. que sera, sera. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean this up a little bit and I'm going to sew in these ends. And then I'm going to show you how you can do a border to clean this up because as it is, you know, this gap in between here, it, it makes it kind of flippy floppy. You know, it's not very well defined, but I'm going to show you how you can do that. Alrighty. All right, so I cleaned this up a little by sewing in the ends, and I just, you know, would run the ends, you know, through the chain stitches and then go through the single crochets back and forth a couple times to secure it. You know, nothing terribly fancy, you know. So from here, we're going to do our border. So you grab your yarn and also make sure that your work is right side facing up. Okay, and you can start really pretty much at any of these archways. It's kind of arbitrary. And pull up your yarn. Whoa, got quite a loop going on here. Yeah, pull up your yarn, chain one, and single crochet into that loop. And then this tail, you don't have to worry about that right now. All right, so now I'm going to sort of scooch this to the side a little bit. There we go. All right, now from here, it's really just a matter of chain three and single crochet, a lot of them. So chain three and into the same space, single crochet. Okay, so we got a little archway on top of the archway. Okay, chain three, one, two, three. Then single crochet into the next space. Chain three, single crochet into the same space. Chain three, single crochet into the next space. One, two, three single crochet into the same space. So basically we are creating these little arches on top of arches and creating arches in between arches, you see? And it creates a very, very simplistic edging. Now, of course, there are a million and one ways to do edging, but this one, after some trial and error, I found it worked out very nicely and I'm going to show you what I mean when we reach the point in between. So let's keep going. So from here, chain three, single into the next, chain three, single into the same, chain three, into the next one, chain three into the same one, chain three into the next one, chain three into the same one. All right, so now the next, as you can see, it's occupied. Don't go into these. Mm -mm, no, don't go into these. What we're going to do is we're going to go into this next one over here. Okay. And I found that chaining three, mm, it was just a, a little bit too much. So what I liked to do was to chain two and then into that next unoccupied arch, single crochet. 
You know, it brings it together, but not too closely, and it doesn't give it too much leeway far apart. So then let's continue on. Chain three into the same one. Chain three into the next one. Into the same one. Into the next one. Into the same one. Into the next. Into the same. Into the next. Into the same. Into the next. Into the same. Oh, hello. Into the next. Into the same. Into the next. Into the same. And we've reached that point again. So again, don't go into either of these because they're occupied, because they're joining. So chain two, and then go into the next unoccupied one with a single. Chain three into the same. Chain three into the next and so on and so forth all the way around. And so as you can see, let me lay this out a little for you. As you can see, it gives it some more definition, you know, as opposed to like, for instance, down here, these two aren't linked. Well, that can be all flippy floppy, you know, I mean, it, there's a lot more room for it to become quite distorted. With this, it's going to stay, you know, it, it's going to have a much more defined edge to it. You know, it's not constricted, it's not warping, you know, and I think that it looks really quite nice and uniform. Now also, you know, I say, you know, march to the beat of your own bongos, you know, I mean, if you find something else that works for you, okay, but this worked for me. And I thought, yeah. And you know, if you've been following my videos for any length of time, typically, I don't do edging. But for this, I thought, yeah, it works. All right. <laughs> All right, so I kept going all the way around and, you know, in the exact same fashion, you know, my, my chain two in between my two motifs here, and I'm almost done. And I just wanted to show you how you can finish up. So one, two, three, into the next. One, two, three, into the same. One, two, three. And in the next one, well, that's our last one. So into that first single crochet, slip stitch, easy as that. And then quite simply cut your yarn, pull out your loop, and then you can sew in your ends and lay out your work and admire what you accomplished. Now, of course, you can also block this piece. You know, personally, I really didn't find that it was really all that necessary because it is so flouncy and lacy and lovely. You know, it really didn't need it, you know. It didn't need any stretching out or shaping, at least I found so. However, if you are using uh, a different yarn, for argument's sake, of a natural fiber, you may be more inclined to do so. So with that being said, I really hope that you liked this tutorial. And if you did, give a little thumbs up button down below because you know I appreciate your appreciation. 
also, please hit subscribe because I do try to post as often as I can, whether it's crocheting or knitting or audiobook narration or my other YouTube channel, Fiber Spider Games. Would love to see you there too. And again, a great big thank you to Lion Brand. I appreciate it so very much for sponsoring my video and Thank you very, very much. And I'm going to put a link in the description box where you can find this yarn. Um, and uh, yeah, so again, thank you guys so very much. And until next time, I want all of you to stay inspired, stay caffeinated, and above all, stay stitching. <laughs> I love you guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.